Hi, everybody, and welcome to today's presentation, where we have the pleasure to present Maps People. Uh, joining us, uh, a full lineup, former CEO, uh, Michael Gramm, uh, chairman of the board, Lars Barmer, and of course, the new CEO for the first time, very exciting, uh, Morten Borgner. Welcome to, to, to you all. Uh, as well, we know this event is, is, is about your Q3 announcement. Uh, of course, we will dig a little bit deeper into all the, the messages from, from the Q3. Uh, as always, ask questions in the box down below. I think we will run the presentation and take most of the questions in the end. But if something fits in, I will, I will try and put it in. But for the first, I will uh, I'll leave the word to you last so you can start presenting the reason maybe by why you have made a CEO change and present everybody. Thank you, Michael. And welcome all. Uh, yes, just a short announcement from, uh, from me. As uh, announced in September, we have uh, changed the the CEO of, uh, of Maps People. So Michael Graham has joined the board as per 1st of November and Morten Brugger has uh, joined as CEO at the same date. We are very thrilled to welcome you, Morten. Uh, I think I will let you introduce yourself later on in, uh, in the presentation. Uh, for today, Michael will, uh, will uh, um, uh, present the Q3 results as we used to, and uh, then he will step down to his uh, board seat and maybe also just give a few words on, on uh, the background for, for stepping down as CEO. So just a big thanks to uh, Michael for all your con contribution and uh, a very, very good cooperation uh, during our time in Maps People. We will continue the, the journey together. And, uh, and a warm welcome to, uh, to Morten. So let's, uh, let's go into the presentation of, uh, of our Q3. Thank you, Lars. Um, first of all, welcome to you again, Morten. And uh, it's been a pleasure working with you on the transition here, taking place the last uh, couple of weeks. And uh, uh, as you said, more, uh, Lars and Morten took over 1st of November. It's been a tough decision for me, of course, but um, we have come to a time where we need someone on board who has uh, done this part of the journey before and you have done that a couple of times and uh, i think we have we have found that we the right person for continuing the the uh, growth journey for maps people okay um i'll run you through some of the uh, the highlights for for this quarter my last quarter in the company uh, but um if we take it uh, from from an end here uh, the AR now uh, it has reached a level of uh, 70, uh, 57, pretty much, uh, million Danish crowns, which is, we are quite satisfied with compared to at the same time last year at uh, uh, 30, 35 million. Um, and this is a growth of uh, 61%. This is the same level of growth as the Q2 uh, report. Uh, but compared to last year, it's it's uh, a lot better uh, where we reached uh, 41%. And looking at, uh, this is the total growth, looking at maps and doors uh, specifically, uh, this is the the product that, uh, that that drives the growth the most. And maps and doors itself has grown uh, 89% compared to 64 uh, at the same time last year. Uh, the last number here is about the NRR. And we are really happy that it's up again on 119%. Uh, last quarter it was 113%, but uh, compared to last year, it was uh, it, it's pretty much the same level. Um, a few more numbers uh, on maps indoors. Uh, maps indoors now um, represents 79% of the total uh, ARR. And that's a growing number from 12 months ago, where it was at uh, 67 percent, and uh, uh, last quarter 77. Uh, so it's it's still growing. And look at industries. We have defined some focus industries, which is corporate office, sports, and conventions. And these uh, focus again is growing. It's a, it's also at 79 percent, but uh, that is for the the, the current quarter. We had a very high number, same quarter last year, but 79% uh, 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 is very satisfied uh, for the focus uh, verticals. Uh, talking about channels, the partner basis has been very, very strong this quarter. It's pretty much partner basis, everything. Uh, so 99% compared to a little bit lower number last quarter. 
but uh, it's it's very satisfied as this is our focus to uh, base the business on the part of channel. Speaking of churn, uh, that's an accumulated year to uh, year to date churn, which is at six percent right now, and that is also satisfied uh, um, compared to lower number, of course, last quarter, but. Uh, a year ago, this was at a level of 11%. So uh, looking at the, the total split of the products, uh, as already mentioned, uh, Maps Indoors is uh, 79%. Google Maps now represents 15% uh, compared to 23% a year ago. And other subscription, which is mainly what we do for the Danish police, that it represents now uh, 6%. We can say that the other subscription, that's a, a product that is not growing, but it's uh, it's at the same level and it's uh, quite sticky. As uh, mentioned, start of the year, we renewed the contract with the Danish police for four years. So it's, a, it's an ongoing cash cow that, that's very healthy business. Google Maps is growing between 15 and 20 percent, but the, the major growth in Maps Indoors, of, of course, results in Maps Indoors representing more and more of the total business. Uh, look at the cohort. Uh, as mentioned uh, last quarter, the, the first couple of years, uh, we were not that sticky. But when implementing a lot of integration made our solution much more sticky. And as you can see here, the cohort from 2019 and 2020 has grown uh, very nicely uh, uh, last year. This year, this cohort from 2019 is pretty much at the same level, but we are still lagging the last quarter. So we think that uh, we will have a nice development in this cohort as well. Same for the cohort for from 2020. It will uh, be at a, a nice level for this year as well. But uh, most interesting, the cohort from last year is grown a lot from 7.5 to uh, 9.5 million. Uh, looking at the uh, LTV CAC development, um, I think this requires a, a, a number of comments here because what you can see is that uh, that the CAC is growing a bit and LTV is is uh, uh, shrinking a bit. But LTV that has a natural explanation because selling with partners, we're counting on the average lifetime value for our partners in customer. And they're reaching out to smaller customers. So this is a, we, we knew and expect this to, to develop this way. So it, it's, a, it's very good. Uh, of course, the month to recover is, uh, is growing because we are ramping up on sales, especially in US and in, in Asia. And, and that's a result um, of, of that uh, investment. But we expect the month to recover to flatten out and then uh, uh, shrink again the the uh, going the coming quarters and maybe if you can just uh, explain the ltv and cac what you mean by that we, we got a question okay. there you know um, not everybody is in the oh, okay. uh, the lifetime value and customer acquisition yeah. cost yeah lifetime value that is the expected value of a customer in the the whole time we have the customer in our base and uh, the the Customer acquisition cost is the price for achieving a new customer. So we we need to have the customer in our base in around 22 months before we cross uh, break even for that customer. And, and of course, the recovery rate uh, we we hope it'll go down to around 14 months. That's uh, that's in an average month for a number of months to recover for, from from. Uh, B2B SaaS business, but uh, it, it is a bit high now because we are investing a lot in, in sales resource. And of course, this is cost on our side that is uh, uh, resulting in, in this uh, curve going up. But we expect it to flatten out and, and then go down again when we see more result from our investment. And, 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 and do, you see, do you see any risk? Is there any risk that the, the customers are getting smaller? You always this about stickiness, that, that you are how much you are integrated. 
even if the customer is getting smaller and while it's your partner getting in, does that still mean that that they are might might be small, but they are still very integrated into the system? You know, even if they are smaller customers, you know, a little yeah. bit. Of, you're thinking about that because that could pose a little bit of a risk. The smaller down you go to customers, yeah, it, it's a good question. But uh, our partner are all SaaS business themselves, so and our component is really important for their product. So going out with our um, indoor mapping component as a mandatory part of their offering. We really don't care much about if it's large or smaller customers they are going out to, but we are getting more and more market volume as they are also uh, uh, reaching out to the smaller customers. So the total volume of customers we can reach is getting bigger and bigger as they are going down to smaller customers. We are doing some direct sales ourselves, of course, also, but we are focusing on the, you can say, Fortune 500 uh, as an expression. So we are, we are, we are um, aiming for the really large customers when we are talking about direct sales. Compared to our partners, they are also aiming for the large customers, but, but they are going further down the curve uh, for smaller customers. And, and, and that is, um, that's good because then we are tapping into much more volume in terms of market. And the stickiness, you know, you it's no longer by you. It, it, if the partners, uh, you can see apps are sticky uh, as, as you can follow there, then the stickiness just keeps out by the partners apps. Yeah, perfect. That's it, got, because they are delivering, a, for example, a booking system and integrated to, uh, to IoT devices. And, and, and that's uh, where the stickiness comes from. Yeah. yeah. Over to you, Lars. Yes, thank you. So um, we are, uh, yeah, that, that's actually a topic every, every quarter that, that our revenue is, is uh, much below our, our ARR. Um, but that's, that's due to the fact that, that we are measuring our contracted ARR and uh, therefore we have a lot of ARR that is under construction or under development. Um, and so, so the bridge from our recognized revenue to our ER is is here, with the with orders and projects under development with a with a value of uh, just below twenty million, and then we have uh, uh, delivered uh, not yet recognized uh, revenue due to the IFRS uh, regulation, uh, where we can uh, first. Um, monitor the, the revenue later. And last, I, I have a short question here. Here you can see it's 40 million in our and you mentioned uh, 56. I am co for, totally correctly to understand that you're only talking about maps indoor. Yes. Yes. Other okay. business area are, are, are equal to your revenue. Is that correct? Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Perfect. So, so Perfect. Just to get that clear. Only, only a picture of, uh, and, and that's where we, we monitor, where we monitor this. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Michael. The financial highlights, uh, we have a revenue of 7.1 million in, in Q3 compared to 6.3 last year. Uh, our year-to-date revenue is 21.5 million compared to 18.7 last year. And please remember here that last year we had uh, the recognition on the Google Maps business. Uh, the mo Most of the year with 20% margin, today we have 12% margin, and that's uh, that's a difference of, of around uh, roughly 3 million Danish in, in less recognized revenue for us. We are recognizing our net uh, revenue on the Google Maps business and not our gross uh, revenue. Uh, it's to be found in... Um, in our quarterly report in the notes, uh, and I, I think our our gross uh, revenue on Google Maps is is just below ten million euros this year, um, but we are only recognizing the net, uh, so our our margin. Uh, our uh, costs are fully under control. We are monitoring every part of the the business, and we are we are very close to the cash flow as well. Our EBITDA is uh, minus uh, sixteen point seven million. Uh, it's a bit better than our plan for the year, uh, but we are not changing our uh, outlook for uh, for the year uh, yet. On, on on that, but we are we are still better on both EBITDA and on cash flow, um, in uh, at 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 the end of Q3. Um, I think that's what we have for 
this slide. Maybe now it's time to uh, let Morten introduce himself, and uh, and then maybe Morten, you can uh, take a few slides here and and present. Yeah, perfect. Thank you, Lars. So yes, I'm 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 the new face here, and you have to get used to me going forward here. Uh, let's remember this is day 25, so I may not know everything, uh, so I have to lean on some of my colleagues uh, here. But first of all, thank you very much to Michael. It's been a very steep learning curve and a very professional onboarding process uh, that uh, that we've un uh, undergone and an extremely professional handover. Uh, a few words about myself. Um, as those of you who are native English speaker can probably listen to my accent that it is Danglish. So yes, I am. Danish, but I've lived the last probably 25, uh, 20 years outside Denmark, uh, a couple of years in Switzerland, a lot of years in Luxembourg, and now also getting to a lot of years in, in, uh, in North America. Uh, then people say, how are we going to do this? The great thing is that, you know, I can definitely understand uh, the culture of this company and I can help internationalize this. And it's been very natural for me over my career for the last 10 years to spend approximately 50% of my time in Europe and 50% of my time in the US and elsewhere. And of course, in this job, it will continue in a similar pattern here as well. What's important to understand is that for the last 25 years, I've been in recurring revenue businesses. So I'm not new uh, to the SaaS model. I'm not new to the uh, uh, recurring revenue model either. And I'm a big fan of it. And that was probably a requirement for me uh, when I was looking for new opportunities. Speaking about deciding to accept the opportunity here in, in MAPS people from Michael and from, from Lars and the board. Um, it's a company that honestly is in a very good condition, right? All the basics are in a very, very good condition. I can confirm that after my 25 days in here. Uh, I think it's a great opportunity that holds a lot of potential uh, for this company, both uh, to grow in, in, in the financial numbers, but actually also to grow in a much more international uh, context. And clearly, that is, uh, that is uh, some of the things that we discussed that I will have uh, a lot of focus on continuing the journey for MAPS people. How do we continue the internationalization so that that part can help us continue uh, the growth that we have? And, and, and we're going to do that uh, uh, with a value proposition that I think is extremely compelling and interesting uh, for the future and changing a lot of things on how uh, we work and how we interact uh, 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 while we while we work or why we go to stuff that is indoors. So that's a little bit about me and, and, and how I see the task going forward. Then I've had the pleasure <clears throat> of presenting some of the new things because I think I can put my color on some of this as well. So yes, we have a uh, we have a, a very high uh, channel focus on the on the company here as well. And that is continuing. And, and, and we actually saw a pretty decent development of that in Q3. Uh, and uh, the interesting part, I think it's not related to Q3, but those of you may have seen the company announcement we did yesterday with a new partner called uh, VisSafe, which is a North American partner. And it was clearly of a size uh, that was uh, so big that we have to, uh, to make a company announcement of it. So just to prove that this is actually continuing uh, both in Q3, but it's also continuing into uh, Q1. We have a very strong land and expand focus. So most of the customers, and specifically some of the partners that we have, they will continue to grow. Uh, so we, we're not depending on signing up new customers to support 100% of our growth, a good chunk of our growth. Uh, we saw that it was 19% of our growth actually comes from our existing customer base here as well. And then you also need to be very good at something. And we have decided that we want to be very good at providing uh, the indoor map uh, functionality and experience in what we call corporate offices. I like to think of that as smart office, smart buildings, uh, which is actually super interesting in my opinion. It is in sport and entertainment venues and it is in conventions. These are the areas where, where, where we're strong, we have customers, we have references. Uh, and our product is, is tweaked to support some of these vertical specific requirements as well. So you should expect to, to see continued growth in these verticals. And as, uh, as Michael said, that's exactly how we delivered in Q1, uh, actually very, very strong. And then uh, we are getting more and more international. 
Michael spoke about the investment we've done. Uh, we've done a, a pretty sizable investment uh, in the North American market with our office in, in Austin and building a team there. And we're starting to see them uh, come up to speed. Uh, and and that, was, uh, uh, that was the customer acquisition cost uh, Michael uh, talked about. So we have a team that is getting up to speed and, and we'll continue that. And we also started uh, an office in Asia uh, Pacific, uh, specifically in Singapore, uh, to actually start growing in that uh, geography as well, uh, because we do feel and we do see that some of the same demands uh, are, are coming from that uh, part of the world as well. And we want to be there because we have, we have ambition to be a global player in this space. If we try and transition that to the next phase, super interesting graphs, in my opinion, you will see that even though we all know that Q3 is a vacation quarter, right? Mm -hmm. Customers are on vacation, salespeople are on vacation, we actually managed to grow. We signed up new partners, but the important part, like the actually the exact inverse message that, 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 that Michael showed about the, uh, the average deal value per end customer, which is some, very often our, the customer of our partners, you actually see on the right side that the actual size of the partners, our channel partners, who is actually you know, generating the, 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 the real customers, end customers, and then the revenue flow all the way back to us, that is growing extremely nicely. And to me, this is very, very positive and encouraging sign. We are signing up channels, pa uh, challenge, ch channel partners, and these guys are actually growing in average size. So they're getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And that, to me, is a, an extremely nice proof point on the value proposition and the service level that, that Maps People is delivering, and that this strategy is actually working. The proof is in the pudding. It's nice to see it uh, fine. You'll see the bottom two, two, two new ones. Uh, Evan team came in in Q3. I did take the liberty of actually putting this safe in. We all know it's not Q3 related, but we have come up with a company announcement, so it is public knowledge. Uh, and, and clearly that is a very interesting new partner. And the interesting, partner, uh, interesting thing about that partner is that uh, not only do they have a lot, a lot of potential in the US, part of the agreement we've made here is that we are actually replacing another Indo Maps provider that they have. So uh, a lot of the growth we will see in this safe will be relatively fast uh, uh, because we will be replacing existing implementation of, uh, of this safe uh, starting shortly. And we will be uh, working with them to grow their customer base using the indoor map uh, functionality in their end product as well. So clearly a, a very, very encouraging uh, uh, win from our side. I, I have a short question there. Maybe I should ask Michael because he has talked about that. You're seeing consolidation in your industry. Some big players in this app industry is buying your competitors. You know, Is that actually what you're seeing? You said it might give us opportunities to go in and push something other out. Is that what you're seeing or is it your value proposition, your product offering, your better connection with, with all the, the measurements that needs to be done? I guess if you look at this, safe, it, it really looks like something monitoring uh, the, 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 the health of the building uh, as not just uh, guiding roads and, and vi uh, uh, visitor management. So can you talk a little bit about why you were able to push someone out? Yeah, well, um... That's an uh, acquisition, as we've seen before, with uh, ServiceNow buying um, MapWise from France, uh, where, where they left a lot of partners uh, on the floor, and we could pick um, many of them up. Uh, in this case, this is actually uh, from Mycelo, a previous uh, mapping indoor mapping provider that was acquired by, by uh, Here Maps, and they have made end of life of this solution. So they need to, to figure out what to do next. And uh, I think it's a, it's a big cadeau to our sales team that they managed to get us in here in, in this uh, very big case. Uh, but they were also forced to find another solution because of this uh, end of life from, from here technologies, which is more focused on the car uh, navigation industry. Um, and that's, uh, I think, they... they are doing some part in the uh, the uh, the indoor mapping business, but this is a, a result from a, 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 they 
acquired a company four years ago called Mycelo. And these maps from Mycelo were used by WizSafe, but they are no longer maintained. So they have uh, made end of life of, of that product. And, and that's uh, uh, why we're coming into the, uh, the place with WizSafe. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Some may think that this sounds like we were lucky here. Uh, I absolutely do not believe so, right? The fact that we have invested in feed mm. on the street in the US, the mm. fact that we have invested in making our brand known, the fact that we are in the right places, uh, you know, getting a big deal like this, uh, utilizing an opportunity like that is the result of a lot of hard work from our team in yeah. the US. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so that is the explanation because someone could 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 ask you this. You are getting ninety nine percent from partners. I know that can swing between quarters. So uh, why are you still investing in, in feed on the ground, the sales of offices? But is the is the answer lying in this one? Listen, you, we need to sign up a lot of new partners. Mm -hmm. Then we need to make sure that these partners are working and they are successful in selling our products. Uh, and, and partner management is a sales discipline, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and that requires to be there. And if you're not there, if you're not holding the hands of your customers, making sure we understand how we become better together, someone else will do it. Yeah, we have to be there. Yes. And to focus on the adoption, uh, exactly. getting it, uh, being, being used uh, out by their end customers. Yeah. Of course. Good. Just uh, to the next uh, thing, I think uh, my, my key message here is like the, the engine that, uh, that Maps People has invested in is in place. Uh, and, and we're starting to see some of the results in it, you know, more international growth, uh, more big partners as we just talked about. Uh, and, uh, and and that is, I would say, fundamentally in accordance with the plan we have. And, and the guidance that you've seen remains uh, in the 75 to $85 million, uh, million Danish kroners yeah, yeah. ARR. Yeah. I have to remember. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry yeah. about that one. Perfect. Uh, so if I should try and, and, and recap that from my side, we are seeing some nice growth in ARR. 89% from maps indoors. I mean, that is our key part, and as you all know, uh, is where our growth, the majority of our growth in the future is coming from. So this is great news. And we're growing 61% uh, combined uh, over the business, which is actually pretty nice. Uh, we've continued to expand the sales channels. We're working with these OEM partners we talked about, and we keep getting more partners and the partners keep growing. Uh, so the partner size uh, and impact in our business and how they help us growth is working as it uh, as it's supposed to be. You saw that we closed the majority of the business, the vast majority of the business in Q3 within our core verticals. Uh, and that just shows that the investments we've done in being the right one in these verticals, making sure that we have these uh, capabilities uh, that are specific within a vertical, uh, it, is, it is absolutely working for us as well. And we talked about, Michael, you asked a question about why it's important to have the feed in the streets uh, it's in North America and now also in Asia, uh, Asia Pacific. Uh, we've done that uh, quite a bit during 2022, and it continues to work through 2000 and uh, through Q, Q3 2022. And clearly, the expectation is that, that we'll see the benefit of that in the future. And as we mentioned, we are onboarding uh, uh, currently a small office with a handful of people in, in, in Singapore, and it will be interesting to see. Um, how we can replicate the, the, the good success we've, we, we experienced from, from North America. So I think that was, that was it very quickly from me. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, should we go to the questions? Let's do that. How does the partner uh, sales and recruitment work? Uh, who are the partners, you know? And, and generally, how do you go out and, and, and catch those partners? Uh, you, you gave an example here by Visha, but... Uh, a, a, a small elaboration uh, uh, about this. Do you want to do that? I, I, I can give you an answer here. Uh, we have worked a lot with the SAIDS organization. And what we realized about a couple of years ago is that we can find twins to successful partners. So we are when we have found a successful partner in a vertical, we are, we are going out with, we have business development reps that are scanning the market, finding the all the, uh, the potential partners, and then we are reaching out to them. And we've been quite successful on that. So we have some really skilled uh, BDRs uh, reaching out, and uh, then our account executives take over. And there's a team of uh, BDR, account executive, and solution engineers uh, working with these uh, 
uh, effort to get new partners on board. And we've been uh, quite successful on, on working with, with these kind of parts or teams that uh, that uh, we work with. So, so this is, you can say that we are shooting with a rifle here because we are identifying the potential partners and then we are reaching out to them directly. And, and, and you talked a little bit about what, what pushes them out. Uh, it, it's not price, I guess. It, it is, is, is it your abilities, your, your technical uh, integrations and everything, if you, you can elaborate, elaborate a little bit on that. Yeah. Do you want to go first? Then I, or you do you want me to take it? Yeah, I, yeah, let me take that one. I think, you, first of all, it's like, um, are we there to help them? Mm. Right? Can we help them win their business? Mm. Um, and, and then... Um, when, when it comes to this, in, in their solution, they will normally like, let's take corporate office uh, or, or smart buildings, which is a big, big trend for us right now. That is super interesting. It's an application where the employee can book a table or book a meeting room, right? Yeah. And then in large organizations, you also need to be able to figure out where do I want to book it and, and, and how do I find it if, you, if you're the first time in a new office. And where's and, my colleagues? Yeah, and where's my colleagues? Yeah. And clearly you need an app, uh, a map to do that. So, so our platform is embedded in that, uh, in that big app. What we do here is that our application is, to a very large extent, the visualization of the end user experience. So we need to make sure that, that the maps look great. And clearly, we are good at that because otherwise we won't win all these partners because they understand that as well. Mm -hmm. And then clearly, it's the level of automation through all these investments we've done in automation and machine learning that whenever we get all the CAD CAM drawings and how fast and efficient we can transform that into a map you can put into the application. And if there are updates to those maps, how fast and how easy and how cost efficient can we, can we um, provide these updates, right? So these are some of the positive differentiators we have uh, on, on, I would say, the product side and the technology side. Uh, but clearly, uh, we also aim to have a positive differentiator on how we work with the customers to our, our mutual joint success and growth. And, and also, if I could add something here, the ability to integrate the interface from our platform to our customers' booking system or uh, IoT centers, that is uh, something that is very, very strong. We have a core that can handle millions of requests per second. And that's not a trivial thing to, to build that core. And that is already in place. And I think that's very attractive to, to our partners. Yeah. Then there's a question here, maybe for Lars. Uh, can you elaborate on your funding situation and the loan from Wexfund? I think you now stated that you can see your growth plans being, uh, be, being uh, in, in 23 being uh, let out in life with the current, uh, with, with the current funding. So a, a little bit of elaboration about that. Uh, yeah, we, we have credit lines, both, both with Vextron that we actually have not uh, utilized yet. Uh, so we will, uh, I think we'll utilize 10, 10 million here in Q4. We have to do that according to the to the loan agreement. And we have uh, we have credit lines with, with our bank as well. Uh, and we have still a fully funded business plan. So uh, as long as we are keeping track on track, we are we are nicely on the on the safe side. And we have we have uh, tools as well to to uh, to, to inject uh, if, if, if needed. Um, so we have a very positive dialogue with both uh, our bank and Vext Fund. And, and uh, we, are, we are confident that, uh, that we are well funded. And then there was a question whether the vice, uh, vice with safe was, was important for you, that you kept your guidance. I think you have answered that. Uh, so which business vertical is most growth coming from in the, in the quarter? Is it the corporate office? You, you mentioned that, that a lot, or is it uh, more spread out between your three verticals? Uh, or is it, is it this hybrid work who really driving your, your business right now? Yeah. With, with, uh, correct me if I'm completely wrong, Michael. Mm -hmm. but, but, but clearly where we see a lot of traction, not only in Q3, uh, but, but also in our pipeline going forward, it's really from the corporate segment mm -hmm. and what we call smart office and smart buildings. Mm -hmm. And, and that is actually a super, super interesting uh, value proposition. And um, if I should very quickly explain what it is, we, we talked about you can, you can book all that stuff. But, but a tool like that uh, actually also support what we call like uh, the future of work after Zoom and Teams and all mm -hmm. that stuff, which is like behind us. Uh, but we all know that people actually want to work part of their time at home and only part of the time in the office, which fundamentally sets up a trend, you know, 
Uh, you can't have a full desk if you're only here two days uh, a week or one day here and one day in another office. So the tool actually allows the company, like say the CFO, to say, what is the peak demand for meeting rooms and desks? Mm. And then they can actually optimize the number of uh, square meters that they have in the building because they will, they will need less square meter per employee in the, in, in the future. Uh, and and that, that, that's actually what we help them to do. And that actually falls into this, I would say, global trend that we're currently looking in. In the last many years, companies have been investing in growth. That is now shifting to companies investing in cost reduction. So we're actually having a, a very nice fit in what we help large enterprises and corporates for this smart office and building uh, to do. Uh, and that's also why we see uh, uh, some very positive sign in our pipelines for doing that as well. And with the financial crisis coming where you, know, you and I cannot open a newspaper without seeing a lot of companies will have less employees, we think that will actually be reinforced. So I can't really say where that is taking us, but, but I feel that we actually have a very good fit uh, with, with helping with some of these things in the future. And that's why we're getting these partners. That's why this type of partners are growing fast. That, that's why our pipeline is, 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 uh, is expanding with, uh, within, this, within this vertical. Was that, did that make a little bit sense, Michael? Yeah, 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 yeah. And actually, thank you. You, 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 you read to answer two questions <laughs> in one, because how is the corporate office sec affected by all the recent layout with, within tech? Do you see any pullback in demand or is it actually something that could support your, your growth in, in your view? I think you answered that, but uh, yeah, I think just to make sure I understood you correctly. We're still assessing it. It's too early, but, but, but the value proposition does make sense. Like where the sentiment of the CFOs and how they use the cash, right? As I said, there is a general sentiment that it's companies are shifting investments from growth to shifting investments into like, how can we reduce our costs uh, going forward? And, and, and we all know that in North America, they're very good at like a, uh, reducing the workforce very quickly. And then they also very early invest in technology uh, to make sustainable productivity increases. And that's probably also one of the reasons why we're seeing this pipeline grow faster in the US than the rest of the world. But, but we feel uh, that we have a good fit here and we feel that this is an opportunity, um, but the proof is in the pudding in the coming quarters, right? Perfect. And then uh, there's a question here. Uh, how can you have a uh, positive NRR and there's a uh, net retention rate uh, and, and, and someone here asked when we use aberration, we explain it and I'm we're sorry we are nerds in this SaaS space. Net retention rate uh, is, is where you measure how many customers are going out and, 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 uh, and existing customers uh, rising. But if you look at your cohorts, actually from, if I looked at the figure from 2017 to 2020, they are not, they are not actually growing that much. Was that a different type of customers where it's not so sticky, different uh, type of businesses? And, 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 and it, it's really your, your growing in your cohorts, which means uh, existing customer base from 20 on and onwards. Maybe a, 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 some explanation to that. Yeah, very quick. This measurement was made uh, end of Q3 last year. So we took our base at that time. So you can't you can't actually see them from the graph because you, you see end, end of year figures here. Mm. But you will also see that that the cohorts from earlier is higher uh, already per per end of, of Q3 this year than 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 in end of Q4 last year. So uh, so you 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 can't actually see the the growth mm. uh, in Q4 last year uh, that has to be taken into account as well. So, and, so that, and that's a small part. So you are still growing or is there some of your old customer base where you don't expect that much upsell on because you are... As, as I mentioned uh, when I explained this uh, cohort graph is that that uh, the first couple of years we did more or less uh, um, uh, turnkey solutions or solutions for uh, verticals that are not that sticky. And that's, for example, universities. So universities having a solution that are not very much integrated, it's, it's not that sticky anymore. So, so uh, now we're focusing more on partners and we're focusing on deep integration and that makes it, it very sticky. So the first two years, the cohorts there, they are not uh, actually the 2018 is, is okay, but the, the 2017 is, is uh, that's, that's some churn in that uh, cohort. Uh, but, that's due to the fact that we were not focused on integrations at that time. 
So there, there is a there is a change in business type, and we should more follow the the latter part of your latter part of your cohort. More integrations and more partner business. I'll just. Um... The next question. There's, there's a lot of uh, questions here, uh, maybe we, because we have a new CEO. Uh, mm -hmm. they, they are a weak comment about funding situation. Can be much more specific? I, I think we covered that. Uh, yeah. You say uh, credit lines, uh, your current business plan will take you to our, 23. Our, our fourth quarter is always very strong, and we have a, we have a lot of recurring revenue from, from earlier on that I invoiced in, in, in Q4. So... Um, yeah, we are we are tracking, believe me, and we are we are also cost cutting uh, whenever needed. And then there's a, a little bit of question out in the future on the profitability. When do you plan to be bit the positive uh, guidance compared with the IPO changing? And the same question about on the bottom line. Yeah, we 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 are we are still uh, very focused on on our budgets from the from the IPO plans. Uh, and this is this is still more or less the the ballpark. So uh, I, I I can actually not come up with a guidance today. Uh, I I don't think we can we can allow ourselves that. Uh, but we are we are still uh, guiding uh, like like in in the IPO uh, prospectus. Then there's a question here specifically down to this big uh, difference. They are reported uh, is fifty six point eight million per. The cutoff date of the quarter. Can you confirm that Maps people had 4.66 million in periodized and in, in an invoice revenue in September 22? Why do we only have seven million in revenue in total Q3? Oh, no, we can absolutely not confirm our our uh, uh, that, that that revenue in September. We have a lot of projects that are under development and that are not invoiced yet. And and we we are and, and that is that is the the plan in in the prospectus we are we are guidance guiding on our uh, total ARR uh, or, or contracted ARR so um, so so we have we have a lot of ARR that is that are not invoiced yet and that is, that is also in both both in the in the financials and also today in in the presentation. And then there's a question here to ask me to define RR. You know, I, I think there's a lot of discussion out there. You, what you are showing is what is called contracted RR. You know, yeah. there's a small C behind the RR, uh, and, and that's the definition that contracts you have gone into is, is what that, you show that, us. That, that is the guidance from the prospectus. So we have, of course, kept that. We uh, we we will elaborate on on, on guidance for next year with uh, if, if if we should add something there. So that that's an ongoing discussion. Perfect. Yeah, but uh, I think uh, we're already taking too much of your all your busy people's time. Thank you mm -hmm. to everybody for listening in and, and asking questions, and thank you to you three for for showing up and presenting the results. May everybody have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.